Here I am trying to be. I got my bridle on. <laughs> my horse bridle. It's like I don't want the camera. Like, it's bad enough. It's been very interesting in all this, like getting used to being on video. It's. Um, I'm hoping that I'm an inspiration for others because when we first Doug's here, yay! When we first started doing these, I was like, no, I'm gonna wait until I lose weight and get younger. So, howdy! It's Wednesday. It's a beautiful Southern California day. So I was going to do this. Hey, you're back! I know we've missed you. You've been gone a while. Nice to have you back. So, I was going to do this from Griffith Park today, and uh, for those of you who don't know, we do these every week and then we also do it with our paid course as well so we have them back to back and and then I realized oh it's dark like it'll be dark by the time we're done so I didn't want to be in Griffith Park alone with the coyotes in the dark talking about horror films hi Cindy nice to have you so that's what we're going to talk about today so instead I'm at this really awesome little I think is it backwards to you I can never remember um cafe in Studio City where I hang out quite a bit and um yeah so welcome to Los Angeles. Welcome to Studio City. Um, this is a very popular place and it'll start to get busy in a little while. And here's, let me show you one of the best parts about it. Right there. Dogs, dogs everywhere. They come. I, I'm not one that's, <laughs> totally, right? <laughs> totally. So this is Studio City. <laughs> very exciting, right? And then that's my car right there so that I can p- feed the meter because that's part of being in LA. You're getting the whole LA old experience hey Bonnie <laughs> with this so um yeah so I don't know what do you would you rather look at the street what do you want to look at <laughs> or should I turn it around you let me know um so <clears throat> yeah so we're doing the LA thing today and we're talking about horror wah, 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 because next week we are actually going to move the session to Thursday since Wednesday night's Halloween and I fully expect everyone to be trick-or-treating or this is the first year in a very long time like like very long like decades like 15 years probably that I will actually be home on Halloween and not be running a haunt or a fall festival or something so it's gonna be really fun so I had this little get okay I have to show you it's a visual um I had this oh Doug make sure to share in the group share 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 with your friends so I have this get up so it's like a okay so this is what you all do here's what we're gonna do on Halloween (laughs) I should put a little pdf how to do this totally off topic well no it's not because horror hi elaine hey juliana Woo-hoo. all our screen readers <laughs> can't get enough um thanks doug so okay so here's what you do is you take a like a shoe box or a hat box is better and then you <laughs> so you cut out the you cut out the side of it right so so the, you have a square box and you cut out the side that's facing you and so that you can put your hand in there right and then you cut a hole in the top of the shoe box and then you put a bowl on top of the um up on top of the box and you cut a hole in the bottom of the bowl and then you put some like black plastic or cloth or something in in the bottom of the bowl and then you put your hand in the back of the box and then you put a jacket on and you stuff the arm of the, the hand that's in the box and so you put your other arm around the front of the box and then you have the fake arm around the front of the box and you have your hand inside the box so then when the kids reach in to reach for candy you reach up through the hole and grab their hand <laughs> it's awesome i expect all of you to build this you have a week to build this contraption oh you totally have to do this you totally have to do this guy i'm fully i'm fully expecting you to do this all right build your box put your hand through the back and then through the top and grab their hand when they reach for candy and it's you have to be really patient because people just don't expect it especially if it's a little bit chilly you can like hi peggy you can have like your arms around the thing and then (laughs) tell you it works and so um uh, oh, that's awesome. So <laughs> I love Peggy. I love it. I love that. And, you know, I've, I've run a haunt for many years. And, um, uh, yeah, people that uh, are willing to, if they are amputees and they're willing to work in your haunt and play with that, it can be really great. And it's really kind of a fun way, you know. It's life, you got to deal with things. You might as well have fun with it, right? So um, I am a teeny bit evil. I don't look like I write. And then, um, yeah, so we're talking about so next week we're all going to be tormenting trick-or-treaters yes so that's my plan although we, we used to get people that dropped them off by the car loads in our neighborhood but not so much anymore so I don't know I'm not sure where I'll be <laughs> I'm traveling so much these days maybe I'll stay up here and do it because this is a cool neighborhood for it I don't know anyway um so yeah so fully expect to um, be doing that so we're going to do uh next week we're going to do Thursday instead of Wednesday um 
So, uh, yeah, did you see? Did you see that Gimpy is here? Doug is here. So those of you, last week, <laughs> where we did When Things Go Awry, which, oh, the irony of that, um, he's, he is rear window. He's, so Doug was uh, not there. I don't know if, you know, I know you noticed. I don't know if you noticed. Of course you noticed. Doug wasn't there last week because he was at the doctor's office because his foot was kind of hurting for the last month. Month. He's been walking on a broken foot for, yeah, a month. So Doug is one of the most focused people I know. I, um, oh my God, that's awesome. A glass eye. <laughs> that's so fantastic. Oh, oh yeah. Prop people, man. They're the best. Props, prop, prop and Foley people. They're the ones you want at your Halloween party. Um, Foley is sound. So yeah, they can do some really cool things. Oh, I hope the planes aren't too loud. So, uh, <laughs> so awesome. So yeah, so um, Doug is extremely focused. He can be really, really focused and very easygoing. So like he's been doing a lot, very busy month. And so he's kept kind of, oh yeah, my foot's kind of bothering me. <laughs> We're both, his wife and I are both like, you should get that checked out. Oh yeah. And then it started to turn purple. And then he's like, oh, hmm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Walking around on a broken foot. That's our Doug. Cause he's so focused power of the mind man he was so focused on what he was doing and then when he got done with that project that he was doing it, when it ended suddenly his foot started to hurt because he wasn't so focused on something else anymore it is amazing it is amazing what we can do when we're focused so um pitch 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 <laughs> strike three. <laughs> oh, world series dodgers sorry i'm actually not a dodgers fan but it is nice when you're you know your city's team is going Anyway, oh, do I even want to go down that path? So, yeah, sports and politics. <laughs> Just stay away from that. Um, so it is Halloween time. So I do want to, we're going to go into kind of, basically we're just going to run through a quick list of things to incorporate, include in horror films. <laughs> oh, got you. Ouch. Got you. <laughs> pitch, pitch, ouch. And then um, things to avoid when you're writing a horror film. Pretty simple, right? Um, but I also wanted to talk a little bit. I know we talked about, so last week when things go awry and then Doug's foot was going awry while we were talking about going awry. Yeah. So, um, I mentioned that I was going to, uh, talk about happy accidents. And so we talked about that last week. So if you didn't watch last week, go back and watch that because it's really, there's some good mindset stuff there and stuff that we really, 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 um, Ooh, cool. Silent horror. Okay. Awesome. Thanks guy. Look at that, everybody. That's a good suggestion. I have see more buttons, but I can't click on them because it gets me out of, out of, and then you can't see me. So there's more. I can see up to horror movies for story structure, but that totally makes sense, as you'll see in a moment. Um, so we were talking about when things go right and how you can kind of frame, reframe things, you know, and find the good and stuff. And so one of the things we talked about were happy accidents. I gave an example last week, but I have a haunt-related happy accident. So for those of you who don't know, I'm... Uh, have been very involved with producing a haunted house for the last, well, it started as I was a volunteer for a fall festival, just kind of helping them just with their parade or whatever. My son, who was like a child, seven or so at the time, he's in college now, gives you an idea. He, uh, my, my brother actually really loves building haunts in his front yard. And so he showed him how to do it. And so my son was really adamant that we do this. So as part of the fall festival, we started this haunt. Well, then my brother, who's like really a, a gifted genius when it comes to building haunted houses, he came up and started joining us. And we started to get this following that we eventually branched off from the fall festival because it was too big for them to manage. It. And we, we branched out on our own, started our own nonprofit and have been a commercial haunt for a few years. So we are dark this year, which is why I'm able to sit here right now. If you look, if you scroll way down from last year into the October, you'll see me at the haunt last year. I did our classes from the haunt. So, um, scroll a little walk through memory lane and the year before, or were we doing it then? Um, so yeah, I've been doing professional haunts and I was a child. And as you know, from certain circus curtain week <laughs> that I traveled the carnivals as a kid with my dad building spook houses. So I, I don't actually really care for, I don't horror films or haunted houses or whatever, but I had a ton of experience in scaring people. <laughs> Tons. And in a way that's a little bit different in that. And even my grandfather would, they had a two-story house and he actually cut a hole in the floor and built a slide from the roof that went all the way down into the house. He built a, a, a little hole in the roof all the way down to the bottom floor. That's, yeah, I have a very creative family. So 
and you know you look at that now and nobody would do that now because liability issues but the kids loved it they all came to the neighborhood climbed up on a rickety old ladder up to the roof and slid down two stories <laughs> that's my family <laughs> my great grandfather used to fly balloons in the war <laughs> yeah so anyway um blackout <laughs> exactly blackout yeah okay so um with our haunt though when we were first kind of figuring out what to do we were a nonprofit, so we would do it wherever we could get a space wherever someone would donate a space and so this museum had donated a space and we were doing it in their basement basically and then um so we called it motel six feet under <laughs> get it and so then um but then <laughs> well we changed it later because well never mind but then we um so we're building it in this basement well then the second year came around that we were going to do it there and like i don't it was like a week out before we were about to start which is we did a major building like construction kind of building we had construction companies sponsoring us and like a major build they said oh we bubble we double booked this you're gonna have to do it on the front lawn like uh, like a week out so we you know we, we really had the mindset of like we talked about last week of like whatever it's meant to be you know there's something to this and we didn't really have a theme I mean we did the motel six feet under because um it was in a resort area where there's lots of hotels and motels so we were kind of paying tribute to that area so we called it motel six feet under as a tribute to the area but other than that we didn't really um <laughs> I don't know what you mean no Mabel became very popular <laughs> so yeah motel six wasn't really happy with that name so then um we um uh Lost my so so then we got pushed pushed out onto the front lawn and at first of course we were stressing out because we needed to you know we'd already sold tickets online it was like oh my goodness so we start you know we're madly putting it together well part of the haunt was a maze and so we like just kind of put we we're putting this maze together but there was a tree because we we're on the front lawn right so there's a tree we had to work around so we're working around trying to work around this tree and we're putting these walls together for the haunted house and we could not get it to come together because the tree was in the way and so finally we we just said oh you know what forget it we'll just let them get lost like they'll come in you won't be able to tell which way to go because the walls don't line up so we just said we'll just they can just get lost they won't know which way to go it doesn't matter whatever it's a haunted house who cares you know well that became the thing so people went in and they got so lost that they would come back out the front and then we were like all looking at each other like we never would have thought of that idea that never would have, if we had done our usual thing and that became our signature thing about our haunt one of the things about the haunt was that it's not gory and we'll talk about this in a moment um we we don't like gory haunts so it's very retro kind of old school a lot of old school animatronics you know kind of like the box thing i showed you like just talked about effects like that um and we'll talk more about this in a minute because we know as from the long experience of being carny kids that people's imaginations will do far more than we could ever do to them so all we have to do is suggest things and then they'll take it from there so we don't we didn't have chainsaws we didn't have anything like that no blood no guts no gore that was kind of one of our slogans like it was not about being gory it was not about making people feel unsafe nobody ever touched them nobody threatened them it was really super friendly and so people started bringing coming as a family which was really fun so we wreck it was still dark and still really scary but what we then ended up doing and as we grew and we massively grew and moved to another space we actually started getting people intentionally lost where we would do tricks and that kind of things very 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 simple very like pull a string kind of trick like very simple tricks and people would just get so yeah i i don't like um yeah i don't like the gore and i don't like slasher films and i don't I, and so this and what we actually originally we actually have a company called high tech haunts we thought our thing was high tech turns out not so much because we're old so but it was it was like um literally jump scares you know like the old we had an elevator that you ride in you know like just really old school um scares and so people just loved lined up around the block really really loved it and then we had a little girl in there that we pulled everybody and she scared them all so we changed it to Mabel six feet under because she was so popular that's why we changed it so yeah so but but my point with this whole kind of long-winded story is that it was a happy accident, right? If we had been like, oh, no, we like at first we were like, we can't do it. When they first said you had to move, it was like, there's no way. But we just thought, you know what? Who cares? It's a haunt. Like, that's a great thing about haunted houses. Well, about anything kind of 
and one of the things that we've learned in all this online stuff too is like done is better than perfect and you can and the same with your screenplay right you can rewrite and then you see this I can't, this is a whole nother topic we could do is like how many times the first 25 pages are immaculate of a screenplay and then it just all falls apart because someone has re they've re redone those first 25 pages over and over again really perfect but it's not really done it never got done because of that so you just want to kind of yeah the knee jerk is to fix things rather than just go with it so as you're going through life in general it's such a great lesson right because it's one of those things of like you know I wanted it to go this way but if it's not going this way and you're like about it maybe it was kind of meant to go that way and so it's really and Doug and I have said someday we'll do a whole topic once we kind of get a little further along we've had some real challenges kind of getting our business off the ground and stuff and someday further out we'll kind of walk through those challenges and kind of share them with you because there have been many many moments along the way where it's been like oh maybe we should go this way or that you know we just kind of relax and let it happen so it is really really you know that's when you get and that's when you find joy and that's when the happy accidents come and man if we hadn't done that I mean our whole thing became the Mabel Six Feet check-in then get lost <laughs> it was like that became this great thing and everyone loved it and so if we had been all uptight about it we never would have discovered that and so and just like the story I told last week about my friends you know meeting and getting married in a way that was like they never would have met each other if they had stuck to what their original plans were for both of them so that's my little pep talk for the day <laughs> having to do with haunted houses and horror films. So, like I said, we've done a lot, you know, I've done a lot in terms of how to scare people. And um, we have a, Doug and I have a project that's going on that started as one film and now has turned into a horror film. So we're kind of in the early, early, early stages of um, doing that. Yeah, Frankenstein, Frankenstein, that was one of our, <laughs> Frankenstein's laboratory was one of our carnival rides when I was a kid. Um, if it's que sera, sera, right? So, um, yeah, so it's, and it's, I mean, it's not that you kind of let go and be like, oh, I don't have to do it. You know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. You still take action. You still, like, have a plan. You still move forward. But it's about moving forward without resistance. And it's about moving forward with, without clinging, which is so just it's so counterintuitive not to cling. At least it is for me and for the people that I know. It's like you just you think that you want it a certain way. And so it can be really, really detrimental. And the same is true for writing a screenplay. Just write. When in doubt, write. Write, 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 write. Now write. Hi, Rebecca. Nice to see you. Yay. I'm glad they're working. So, yeah, just keep writing. Stop thinking and write. <laughs> Let the voices in your head out where they need to be, out where they belong. Let them free. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell them all to quiet down a bit. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So, let <laughs> crack myself up. So, okay. So, horror films so there are many different types of horror films right Doug's accident wasn't very happy <laughs> but it's given us lots of material <laughs> he's like we're when we're in, you know Doug is also a photographer I'm poor Doug it's like Doug day and uh so we're gonna do a remake of we're <laughs> rear window okay anyway um so there's all different types of horror films right there's this you know typical slasher film there's horror films that are kind of about the gross out factor there's horror films that are about supernatural there's the kind of old school straight horror there's ghost stories there's um, things that have to do with mythology or historical artifacts or you know mummies that kind of thing there's you know your classic horror film Frankenstein classic stories you know uh, public domain stories that people are redoing and you know I mean Creature of the Black Lagoon is um, you know the one that was so popular <laughs> squirrel it's the one that won a bunch of water something water someone help me out here um, but that's basically the creature of the Black Lagoon, right? Kind of repurposed in a new way. Um, so, and then the, one of the newer ones, um, <laughs> no CG. We're going to talk about that, actually. Um, one of the newer ones is found footage. Well, not new. A couple of decades. You know, Blair Witch was probably one of Thank you. Shape of Water. <laughs> I knew somebody would help my poor brain out. Um, yeah, that's kind of a remake of Creature of the Black. You know, it's similar style to Creature of the Black, Black Lagoon. Thanks, you guys. You're on it. Um, so those are kind of the types of horror films. And then, so if the two things basically that you really have to do if you're going to write a horror film is you need to know your genre. You need to know the history of the genre and you need to know the influence of 
the genre. So you need to know who George Romero is and John Carpenter, and you need to kind of watch this. There is a trajectory of horror films of, you know, the old, even if you go back to, you know, Phantom of the Opera and Lon Chaney and these kind of old, even in silent movies, and kind of, if you know this trajectory and the history of them, um, you know, the whole damsel in distress thing, and it, I suddenly dawned on me as I was kind of prepping for this that, tell me if you can think of one, but you haven't seen a horror film. You've seen, like, thrillers and and there, there can be a fine line between a thriller and a horror or, or a supernatural thriller and a horror. Like, like um, I see dead people. Sixth Sense, like, that's considered a supernatural thriller. It's not really in the horror genre, although it's pretty horror. Like, a lot of it has some horror stuff to it. Um, I forgot the point that I was making. But um, kind of, oh, that you haven't really seen a female villain, villain like a Jason or a Freddy or whatever that's a female go write that. That's my gift for you today. <laughs> right? That seems like kind of a cool, I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure there's some out there. I just couldn't think of it. And there's none that are iconic in terms of a sequel of the Here She Comes Again. Maybe that's the name of it. <laughs> Here She Comes Again. <laughs> okay, anywho. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, other than little girls, I guess, the ring and that kind of thing. But even that, it's not the same. Hmm. So, something to think about. Um, so basically knowing that genre and knowing like how did it I mean George Romero like the, the zombie, whole zombie thing right like the, he came up with that and that became the thing and, and I just watched the, the cell the other day which actually I found funny I don't know that it, I couldn't quite tell if they were going for funny it kind of seemed like they were but I, I, I don't know and then I didn't watch the ending um, I know right Mickey is our resident like horror expert so I'm sure he'll watch this so definitely come back and watch the replay of this because if Mickey gets in here He'll help us out. And he, I mean, he is an encyclopedia of films in general, but especially horror films. Um, so, uh, yeah, where's Mickey when you need him exactly? So, um, and then if you know kind of John Carpenter coming in, you know, and, and the whole history of all the Halloween movies and, and, then, and then Wes Craven. I mean, Wes Craven comes in and takes the genre in just to such a wonderful, beautiful left turn and adds an element of humor and an element. And then, you know, with the whole Freddy thing and then, you know, beautifully reinvents with the whole Scream series where they're sort of, that started out making fun of the genre. So, Women in Black, yeah. See what I mean, though? Not the same, right, as Freddy? We need a Fredrita. <laughs> what's a, what's a Freddy-a? I know. Never mind. I'm not going to go down my Freddy story. Um. So anyway, so those are that's kind of the really basic thing. If you're going to write a horror film, you should know your genre because people who know who like horror films love horror films. It's a very passionate audience, and they will not tolerate any kind of you know, whatever, like any kind of plagiarism or that kind of thing. They know their genre. And if you when Mickey's in here, I'm sure he'll comment on it. He was not happy about the current Halloween because it didn't follow the original story. So. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, I think I would clarify that more as a, a supernatural. So here's some of the things t- that you need to include, and we will have a handout that we'll post in here, but um, is a compelling opening. Definitely, you know, you need to have something that right away, sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be the thing, you know, the thing that's going to be the horror part of it, um, but it needs to be compelling in that you are introducing these characters, and that's what kind of leads me right into the next one is that, um, the, the, the story that's happening before the horror part starts needs to be somewhat compelling. And I mean, uh, Psycho is so great, right? The whole story starts down this whole path that it's going to be like a, like a caper kind of thing. And then it just takes this wild left turn. That's one of my favorite openings of a horror film. And it, so, but, but the, the establishing thing needs to be really established and that you need to kind of set up these characters and it there needs to be a story that's happening before the thing that's you know unless you're starting out like quiet place where the thing has already happened which was which was a smart way to go but it's like in general those first few minutes need to be really compelling either setting up the tone or not or intentionally not setting up the tone does that make sense so you're either setting up a tone like la 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 this movie is you know everything's hunky-dory but we know because we bought a ticket because we watched the trailer so we know things are going to go south so it's like you either need to set it up that it's that or you need to set it up as like right out the gate you know it's uh 28 days where it's like uh, or is it 28 days later 
listening to that. I'm having really trouble with movie names today. I don't know why. Um, so, and then basically one of the things too that you can, you know, as you're kind of walking around on Halloween is to think about um, something that's, yeah, totally two, two movies in one, right? Uh, Psycho, so great. Um, yeah, and I mean, Hitchcock, he's such a genius. So, um, um, is that to come up with something that we've never seen before. I mean, Saw, the Saw series, whether you like that kind of film or not, it came up with something we hadn't seen before. Super horrific, but it did, did come up with something we haven't seen before. So, Or what's a gimmick? Or like we're just coming up just now with the female villain that way, a female slasher. You know, we haven't seen that kind of gimmick or horror thing. Like what is something that we could <laughs> total spoil everywhere? All of these have spoilers. Like we kind of are this. <laughs> that could be another t-shirt. How do we get Kipper's spoilers? Um, and then the other thing about about uh, a horror script in general is that they're shorter. Typically, they're ninety minutes. They're to, in, especially if you're reading, if you're going to write, and if you're a new writer, you want to try to keep them short because that's kind of within the genre. Sometimes it can go. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not on Franklin. I'm on uh, Vineland. It does look like Franklin, though. Huh? <laughs> um, so it can be. Um, it needs to be in the genre. One of the things about the genre, do I have this down? Oh, we're going to talk about that later. Never. Um, well, no, I'll go ahead and mention it now. Is that the genre, and this might sound weird at first, but the genre of a horror film is very similar in formula to the genre of a comedy in that they're both, um, <laughs> spoiler alert, <laughs> we should do it. Okay, put that on our list. I don't have my pen. Do I have a pen? I have a pen. Um, is is that both both comedies and horror films are typically shorter. They both you both set up audiences in the same way in terms of kind of the the three beat structure. You know, jokes comes in, come in three. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom. That kind of comedic timing. Same thing can be true in a horror film in terms of scaring people. So you wait for it. You draw it out. You wait for it. Boom. So there's a very similar, even though they're very different. Um, emotions, the the emotional formula is very very similar. Yeah, a build up and a payoff, absolutely in both things, and that's why when someone combines the horror and the and the comedy genres, I, I just think you know we're watching movie night, and for our movie night we're watching you know, Frankenstein classic. I don't know if you classify that as a horror, but Shaun of the Dead is a great horror comedy. You know, it's like that when people actually there's another one too, um, Zombies with Woody Harrelson. Sorry, I don't know what's up with my brain today. It's because I had a massage earlier today, so I can't think anymore. Um, so, but basically, it's the same kind of structure, right? So, the other kind of, you know, obvious things are, are that your characters are genuine, so that, and not too stupid. They can be stupid as long as they're intentionally stupid. You know, the old thing of like, don't go in there, you know, that whole thing. Like, your audi- audiences will become very engaged and will really um, couch coach and be like, you know, yelling at the characters especially if they're not um you know being smart so you want to have characters that are genuine early on in the genre it used to be that you know the heroine or you know often it's a heroine in a horror film which is interesting right the women women's the victim um usually the hero win you know doesn't die and then kind of midway through the genre they started picking off the heroes and so now kind of all bets are off anyone can die in a horror film doesn't really you don't have kind of the same through line um but you do need to have characters that we care about otherwise it doesn't matter if they die or that you really dislike because then it adds a different element of when they die right but you need to have genuine characters and also the villain needs to either be have a lot of depth and and we cover this all we dive really deep into this um i know i, I do like horror comedies for sure um we dive pretty deep with this within the paid course about villains and you know villains can be super interesting and really in depth or they can be really one note i mean freddie is pretty one note jason is pretty one note right but they're terrifying so it is like you can do that as long as you're it's intentional and as a new writer you want to either have some sort of gimmick or twist with that villain like making her a female i'm on that that's my bone right now or that they have some other element to them that makes them unique and interesting. Um, 
So then the other, you know, one of the other kinds of things for, with when you're writing horror film is that if you go down and you're writing a horror film that's either supernatural or based on mythology or based on anything historical, you need, you know, research. It's like that's one of the things that you can include. Sorry. That's one of the things that you can include that will make it really, really more interesting is if you include really interesting research or if it has to do with a horror, uh, historical subject. Really? You think that Frank... Oh, see, you know what? Full disclosure, I haven't seen all the Freddy films. My version of Freddy is one note. Okay, ah, awesome. Thanks for calling me out. Because if you know that character, then perhaps he isn't. But from what I've totally have just been like in the marketing. So, but he works either way. What, so, you know, he's still a scary villain to me, for sure. Whether he's, you know, he's engaging and interesting. It's interesting. That makes me want to watch him. Um, so, yeah, my <laughs> Us. We, where is Mickey? Mickey, we need Mickey in here because he would he would be like schooling us on Mike Myers right now. Um, and then also, so the other thing is, so if you do, you know, do these pick these historical things, you know, you had this um, super uh, you, kind of in depth. You can do well, Susan. Good to see you, man. <laughs> so you can do like really super in depth things. Um, if you know the historical genre or whatever. Um, and then also, oh, that's true. That is true, Guy. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. He verbally communicates with the protagonist, which is really unusual, right? Yeah, that's cool. And I, I absolutely love the concept of the Nightmare on Elm, so Nightmare on Elm Street series. I, I love that concept of your dreams and all that stuff. Um, Wes Craven, master. Um, and then the other thing is you need to establish what the rules are. Because typically in horror films, something wazzy is happening, right? So you need to establish what that, what that rule is with that, within the genre. So, you know, if the ghost appears on Sundays, then the ghost needs to consistently appear on Sundays. Because if the ghost comes in on a Wednesday, everybody's going to be like, what? That ghost doesn't come on Wednesdays. It's like people really cling to that in, a, in, a, in the horror genre. So establish what your rules are. The rules can be as crazy as you want like it doesn't matter at all the rules can be anything it doesn't matter like in the slightest as long as they're consistent so also you want to make sure that you allow the audience to do to use their imagination so show not you know show don't tell is a very common thing in screenwriting but in horror the horror genre you want to show them but not too much because if you lay it all out there one if you're trying to be scary and you're laying it all out there it can become intentionally funny we become desensitized really easily so definitely um you want to have some kind of engaging atmosphere like it either a cool location or there's something around them that's like engage that pulls people in and then you want to be able to allow the audience to kind of fill in the blanks fill in the gaps like we said with our haunted house we didn't do we hardly did anything in terms of like in decorating or anything like it's so funny now because we're not doing the haunt this year i had several friends say hey do you have any costumes i can use i was like no not really like we don't have any props or costumes like we did not we got people lost and we did not we relied on their we painted things and made really cool lights and stuff but we more used darkness than we did you know any kind of props or whatever i mean we had it was a motel theme and so we had actual it's one of the things that we recommend if you're wanting to build a haunt is that you use actual things. You don't use props. And so we had real, you know, a television from 1940 and that kind of stuff. So we had that kind of thing. But it, we didn't have, like, you know, boiling pots. So allow that audience. Audiences are really sophisticated these days. So allow them. Don't spoon feed them and allow them to fill in the gaps. Also, you want to keep it really, really simple. Like, it can be complicated in terms of rules, theories, stories. But... But it doesn't need to be. That's the thing. Like some of the more, you know, even Quiet Place. We have a whole other thing on Quiet Place because I have a pretty strong opinion about, uh, opinion about Quiet Place. But it was really simple, right? The concept is fantastic, super fantastic. So it's the more simple that you make it, the easier people can relate to it. And then definitely you can do, you know, all kinds of clever elements. This is where you let your imagination go all wonky and scary and whatever. And, and really, really look at the things that you know your own fears like right because you're right great example peggy a shadow can be a lot scarier than the actual monster and i mean that's a famous famous thing with jaws which is not a horror film where they talk about how they built bruce the shark and and bruce never worked and so they ended up filming around it and not using it and using music instead and it was genius right so they didn't have to do a lot with the shark because they used 
they use the music and music is so important in a horror film obviously so you know kind of keeping it simple kind of and then you, letting your imagination run wild and really like what are the things that scared you as a kid what are the things that really scare you what are the things that you worry about playing on those fears is far more universal and will get a, far more people wanting to read your horror script than you know just cutting someone's head off <laughs> random decapitations <laughs> so like okay this is a great story so my friend's a bartender right and he accidentally cut his thumb off <laughs> but his mother the hospital called his mother and said your son has a decapitation just that, that some, someone's got to use that <laughs> right right Susan I know you'd appreciate that what do you think I am so it is like um it's funny to have friends come in here that I've known for like my whole life <laughs> um so so yeah you can keep it super super simple and you can keep it really really visceral in terms of what are the things that scare you and what are the things yeah because you're um yeah exactly you guys are giving some great examples right so it is like the use of shadow the use of imagination and and i when i so when we did the haunted house i stood out in front in the front thing and i was for a few reasons we had literally thousands of people that would come through and so i would stand there one to mom a lot of people and kind of i would give them what the rules are and whatever and and i was also kind of checking them out to make sure nobody was drunk or anything to protect our actors and so if they were i could totally mom a them and be like you know you can't go in or whatever but the other thing was to get them all worked up, right? And so I, people would ask me the funniest questions about what was in there if they'd never been in a, Is there this? And some of the things they would come up with, I was like, no, but there should be. And that's a good idea. And then if some, literally all the time, like a good 25, 30% of people, especially young teenage girls, would work themselves into tears before they went in, worried about what they were going to say. And I was like, you know, there's nothing that we could do that you... You, what you're doing to yourself right now is far worse than anything we can do to you and it, it just really 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 is amazing yeah that's true Peggy that's a really good example as well um, so yeah so there's some things to include and we'll have a handout that kind of lists these all out for you guys and then things to avoid one of the big ones is cliches because people and now that the genre has become so um, sophisticated that gets harder and harder and then the other thing so we started this whole thing by saying know your genre right you want to you want to write a horror film go watch horror films like really know the genre this is one of the genres that you really kind of need to know what's going on with the genre so but then the pitfall that you can fall into is just un, unintentional plagiarism so you don't want to take oh that's a good idea I think I'll do that you know you definitely and it can be easy in this genre to unintentionally like put things in the film that are from other movies and you can I mean like you can use zombies in anything right like it, it is like or even vampires or you know werewolves or whatever I mean Twilight what a great talk about genius you know, like taking taking two different uh you know horror villains and putting them in modern like genius modern and then adding a romantic element to it like really really good yeah right exactly Peggy. So that's another I wasn't even going that deep so now that's really good Peggy's coming taking it to a deeper level you guys are so smart in that um you know you're taking it to a level now where it's the I'm talking about kind of just overall genre stuff but now yeah definitely like and Wes Craven does a good job in that he comes in with the scream and makes a uh, series and makes fun of horror films um for those you know that you know all, any teenager that has sex is going to die in a horror film you know that kind of thing so you want to stay away from plagiarism <laughs> and then you know and we talked about this a little bit is making sure that things aren't unintentionally funny and we've become so desensitized that if you if you start your horror film out and you just start dismembering people like all the time pretty soon people are like oh there goes another arm like it gets it gets people get desensitized and then it gets funny and then you're unless you're going for that then it can you know it can be really you know just really dead in the water <laughs> hey that's a good horror title dead in the water <laughs> anyway what's that from <laughs> what's that look that up um yeah exactly so and then um so then the other kind of two things that we talked about that can trip you up are if you do go the mythology route or you do go some ancient history route you need to do your research if you get it really wrong and people will be like uh yeah no that didn't go that way you're going to lose people right out the gate. So if you do pick some sort of historical element, know your historical element, like do your, especially now, it's so easy to research things. So you want to make sure to do your research. And then also if you do set up a rule, like we said, like the ghost appears on Sundays, you need to follow your own rules. And don't, this is where Doug and I have discovered, don't make your rules too complicated. When they get too complicated, your story just kind of falls 
falls apart. <laughs> that is <laughs> sequel to the Shape of Water. <laughs> Dead in the water. <laughs> You're good. You guys are so good. I'm <laughs> sitting by myself on the sidewalk, cracking up. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, and then we talked this a little bit, you know, show, don't tell, but don't show too much. So those are some of the things that can really, really, really trip you up. And then one of the things, and Guy keeps mentioning it, is, <laughs> that's so great, Elaine, is, um, is uh, CG, computer graphics. So a lot of people think that lowers their budget, but we have become really, really sophisticated in terms of audiences, in terms of what looks fake and what doesn't. And so unless it does not, like some people think, oh, we'll just CG that and that'll make the budget lower. No, no, no. It goes, it's quite the opposite. It'll raise your budget up because in order to get CG that really looks good, you need to spend some dough. And it can be really, 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 you know, there's nothing like bad graphics that make people just hate a horror film. And, and it, it, they've done all these tests on people and how sensitive we are to uh, computer images and how we can spot a, you know, a computer generated uh, image and know if it's real or not, especially if people. Um, we have such an intuitive sense of people and when we see a real person and you know they're trying to do all these AI stuff and stuff with scary stuff with all these robots but it's going to be a long time I mean even the ones that you see now that look human right like you're like whoa like we it's really we are so sensitive um, so um, awesome yeah theater magic is so it's just so much better like really it's really and using um, yeah, and everyone has this high-def TV, so you can see when it's a green... And we can do... I could do a green screen right now if I wanted, you know, like, we can do our own green screens and stuff, so we're just too sens we're too desensitized to it, and we're too sophisticated now, so if you're going to do computer graphics, you really need to know what you're doing, and and it can be, you know, I mean, I've seen some hilarious things, and then also I've, I've read many, 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 many horror films that have been submitted by writers that submit them to, you know... Uh, companies or whatever that do uh, low budget films and so they're they think it's a low budget film because because it's a horror film and that that is true with horror that typically it they're they're less of a budget and so you can get them made a little bit easier that's why we're starting with this producer we're working with he's starting with horror because he can doesn't have to spend as so much money but it's um yeah black and white force perspective like what's all totally and lighting too lighting is cute lighting music we haven't even gotten into that yet but anyway so people will, would submit their screenplays to these these companies that i'm reading for that would say this is a low budget thing and then there'd be all this um you know just things you know water rushing and you know things that are really expensive and i'd be like what are they thinking this is super expensive and they'd be like oh no it's all computer graphic i'm like okay yeah no doesn't work that way so yeah and then you know doing force perspective the things that you can use that really make things work are force perspective and then music is absolutely huge it's huge so those are kind of those are just the general I wanted to kind of go and you guys have been adding as many great things in there as we've provided to begin with so we will put this in a handout and then um, for you screen readers out there, we're going to dive a little bit into what a reader would make, how you make suggestions as a reader in this regard. So um, making sure I've covered my notes. You guys see the top of my head all the time. <laughs> so lovely. So see, it's starting to get dark. It's going to be dark soon. And then I might go to Zombie Joe's. So if you, anyone lives in Los Angeles, Zombie Joe's, Griffith Park, Ghost Train. I say I haven't seen all, I know all of these because I know all the, all the haunt makers the people that run these places but i haven't actually seen them so i might go out <laughs> too scared i might go out this weekend we'll see <laughs> you want to go susan what are you doing so all right and doug can't go anywhere doug's usually my guy that goes you know we'll, we'll like crawl around in a haunted house <laughs> yeah cheap yeah saw right so that's and that is why horror films can be um like low budget is because you really just need you know a couple guys in a gross bathroom and a saw and you're good so yeah so that's basically it so happy halloween and i'm counting on someone someone do the box thing that we talked about at the beginning and um <laughs> get well soon god poor cindy and your spell check man it's so awesome how can we that that's a we should use that in the screenplay as well um, so yeah, 
I want to see pictures of your boxes that you create for Halloween. <laughs> Nicely done, Doug. And uh, we will see you next week. Uh, Thursday, though, next week, uh, when we talk about here come the holidays. <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about next week. So um, cool. All right, guys. I will see you next week. And oh, also, we have a new, brand new training that we've put together that's coming out on the 1st of November. Very exciting. So new videos, new trainings will lead into new workshops. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, we will see you on the flip side. See you next week. Cheers. Bye, guys.